Thank you. It's good to be here. Welcome. My name is Michael Thurlow. Glad to see you all. Once again, we're looking and we're continuing in our series called Doors. Uh, this morning, uh, it's a door of hope that we can be a door of hope as men and women who follow and serve Jesus Christ. Last week it was a door of encounter. If you're cool with the internet, if you're part of our Facebook page or YouTube, you can see my fantastic message, me in living colour. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, um, so you can watch that if you missed last week or listen to it or whatever that we're here again. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are indeed our hope and our salvation as we've been reminded today of your mercy and grace. Lord, we thank you as we be your hands of feet, as we be your words of hope. Lord, help us. Minister to us. You know our needs, you know our concerns, you know our worries and our joys. So Lord, as we pray, Lord, as we open the word today, may you come and just meet us there. Encourage us there. Move us forward, onward and upward as we be people of hope and bringers of hope and life and faith to those around us. In Jesus' name, Amen. So let us put away all those negative thoughts. Let us lay aside those destructive things in our life. Don't think God doesn't hear you or see you or that he cannot use you. Stop thinking that he doesn't care. And let us be a door of hope for someone in Jesus' name. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 22 to 25, we read these words. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they heard their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep gone astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd. Have you walked through that door of hope and salvation? On top of this door there is a sign. And it says, come on in. Jesus loves you. And behind that door is a silhouette of a man with arms outstretched. It is Jesus. Arms outstretched to you and I, welcoming us to come on in. Maybe those arms outstretched might remind you of a man upon a cross. Monday night, Franklin Graham's simple message of hope. God loves you. God wants your soul to be restored. A simple message of hope rang out across Brisbane as hundreds gave their lives to Jesus Christ through a simple message again of hope and salvation. I pray you've accepted that timeless message. Jesus loves you. Died for you upon a cross. And will you receive him? As you receive his hope, will you then be givers of hope? The Bible is full of amazing people, normal people like you and I. Isn't that good? Amen? Faults and all. Wins and all. Fails and all. Sickness and all. Drama and all. But they followed the simple call and the simple message. Abraham, Noah, Joseph, Moses, David, Paul, as last week, who was Saul. All throughout the Bible, faithful men and women, Ruth, following the Saviour. Rahab the prostitute, people with a checkered past. 
But God faithfully used them. Before me today, there's a few normal people doing amazing things. You and I as we pray and serve and help and care and love. We can be givers of hope and healing and help. Let us be a doorway to someone. Don't think you've got nothing to offer. I heard this definition of normal. We do jobs we don't like to buy things we don't need or can afford. To impress people we don't like or know. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yes. How true that is in our day and age. For us men and women who are followers of Christ, there is so much more we can be doing to be available, to be ready. As we surrender our life and say, God, I am yours. As we step through that door and say, God, let's go. In Acts chapter 3, it's the early church. There's a crippled man. He's at the temple gate and Peter and John happen to pass by. And it's verses 3, 1 to 3 of Acts chapter 3. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At three in the afternoon, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple court. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Friends, he couldn't even get there himself. This was this man's life. He was carried there, put there every day, crippled from birth. What a sad, lonely life to beg for money and for coins. Imagine if that was your child or your friend or your husband. Not much hope. Your life was in the hands of those who passed by every day. Yes, there would have been a high traffic area. Apparently this man was about 40 years old and so he would beg This was his life, his daily routine. Hoping someone would see him, hoping someone would have some compassion and throw a few coins. People knew him, they'd seen him. Maybe they gave him some money last week, but not this week. Week in, week out, he would beg. And on this day, Peter and John happened to pass by. Oh, new faces. Got a few coins, got some money for a cripple. And in verse 6 we read, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking the man by the hand, they, they, they helped him up. And instantly this man's feet and ankles became strong and he, he stood there, he, he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Imagine that. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and leaping, and praising God. Well, wouldn't you? They had something better than coins. The miraculous power of Jesus Christ. They gave what they had. Time and Jesus. They were not too busy to offer hope. As we trust in the Lord, we will see him act and move upon our lives and upon those around us. Friends, it should never be about, oh, when I have enough time or when I have enough money or when I've done this thing, well, then, then I'll go and serve the Lord. We can offer hope today. We can do it now. God wants to see you and I trust Him now and to take a stand and to stand up like that cripple and praise God. He had nothing to lose and so much to gain. He obeyed these men of faith. What about us? What about us? Maybe it'll just be a few baskets of food or a few pantry items or a listening ear or being a friend to a neighbour.
Maybe God will just call you to prayer. To pray for the impossible because He's done the impossible. Friends, the reason we need the good news is because there's so much bad news around. Jesus is good news to us all. He is the giver of hope and life. Let us be a door of hope. In Isaiah chapter 41, verses 17 to 19, we read this. The poor and the homeless are desperate for water. Their tongues parched and no water to be found. But I am there to be found. I am there for them. And I, God of Israel, will not leave them thirsty. I'll open up rivers for them on the barren hills, sprout fountains in the valleys. I'll turn the baked clay badlands into cool ponds, the waterless waste into splashing creeks. I'll plant the red cedar in the treeless wasteland, also acacia, myrtle and olive. I'll place the cypress in the desert with plenty of oaks and pines. Everyone will see this. No one can miss it. Unavoidable, indisputable evidence that I, God, personally did this. I, God, will bring the transformation. We thought it might, there might have been a bit of wind and rain this weekend. <coughs> it's all a bit calm now. Friend, God has not forgotten the poor, the thirsty, the displaced, the widow, the orphan, the lonely. So don't you. Bring love and hope. Bring the love and hope of Jesus Christ into a bad situation. Open a door of hope and compassion and generosity. Let us be a friend. Let us listen. Let us pray. Let us help. Let us care. My hope and prayer of many of you here is that we will effectively reach out beyond these walls. It may be with some food. It may be with some help. It may be with some practical things. But let us open those doors. Maybe you'll be sponsoring a child through compassion or world vision or Watoto. Maybe you do that already. Maybe you'll be rescuing young ladies and girls from the sex trade and support A21. This year we're launching Operation Christmas Child. And next month, thank you ladies, we'll have a box and you can bring a few stationary items and put in some pens and pencils when you're down at Big W or Kmart or whatever. Grab a notebook or a pen and put it in as we collect items for children throughout the year of different things at different times and different months. And then at the end of, towards the end of the year we'll pack boxes and they'll go and bless children in third world countries. Simple but effective hope. In Jesus' name, where it's needed. Let's support our chaplains and RI teachers and thank you Cheryl for all you do and others who teach and care and as we give and support and pray our chaplains in this community. Their, their work is not easy. Help with a food hamper. Get involved with our crisis caravan. Whatever you need to do, we can be people of hope. In Isaiah 46, we read these words. Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried you since you were born, even you old age and grey-haired people, there won't be any of them here. I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I'll sustain you and I will rescue you. Maybe you need that today. Maybe in the place you're at today, maybe you need to know that God will sustain you. Certainly a word that's been important to me over these last couple of years is that God will sustain us as a family and God will sustain me as I seek to minister His word and care for His people. And he hasn't let us down. 
Verse 13 says, I'm bringing my righteousness near. It's not far away. And my salvation will not be delayed. Let us grasp that hope. God says today, I'm the one who will rescue you. I'm the one who's committed to you. I'm the one, God said, who hears you. From your first breath, I am your God. I'm your God. I know you. I hear you. I love you. Don't just sit in your nice little seat every week and drive home to your nice little house and put on your dinner and have a cup of tea. I think you've done what God has called you to do. Let us give faith. Let us give action to our faith and life. It's time, God says. I can use you now. You can help someone now. You can be my hands and feet now. Don't be that crippled, but get up and walk. Stand up now. Make a difference now. Do something now. Try something new. Reach out to that struggle family. That family that's struggling, three doors down. Include someone. Encourage someone. Open that door. Share your faith. Give some hope. Give some food. Give some money. Give some prayer. Bring that friend that you've been putting off. Doing. Help out that person you know who's struggling. Maybe at work. Maybe a neighbour. Maybe at school. Be bringers of hope. Be bringers of hope now. Care now. Peter and John did. God is speaking to us. We take the living hope of Jesus Christ beyond these walls every single day. Stephen Furtick says this, Stop talking yourself out of things God has called you to do. God bless you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that now is the time. Let us be your hands and feet. Let us be your people of hope and salvation. As we step out of from these walls, as we care for those within these walls, as we reach out to those who need to know you. Lord, I thank you that you hear our prayer. Strengthen us, fill us with your spirit. Lord, thank you that we've met with you today. We've heard from you today. As we open that door and take a step. In Jesus' name, amen.